<clears throat> Welcome everyone to this Force Friday, right? So we are in Force February, the month of February, and we're uh, celebrating um, Force February. And by doing so, or how are we doing so? Um, we're going to be doing that with a character design contest um, every week that gets presented on Saturday morning. So tomorrow morning will be uh, the second week and you'll um, get an Instagram post from Swenley Mertunje and I on who's the character, the new character for that upcoming week. Um, again, all the artwork gets posted on Instagram to a specific hashtag by that Thursday night. So this upcoming Thursday night and then Friday, here we are, right? We're going to take a look at a bunch of the different artists work today and we're going to pick a winner and the winner will win something off of drawingforce.com, right? So I want to say before we even get into any of this, um, thank you to those of you that submitted work today. Uh, very exciting. Um, Ritun J. Swenley and I took our time looking through um, all the work. Uh, if you don't see your artwork here today, it probably just means you were too far off base with one of the requirements of the um, of the contest. We're going to go over that today. We're going to share with you, like, how are we looking at this work? So I'm hoping what happens from week to week is you guys will get better and better at knowing, like, what it is to do some character design work and what we're looking for. And I'm imagining, like I said, I'm predicting here that we'll see some vast improvement uh, as the weeks come, right? So I wanted to share with you something personal and close to my heart um, with Space Cowboy. Uh, I wanna share with you a, um, what I think is an excellent, excellent example of Space Cowboy, uh, a cartoon of mine that I used to love watching when I was probably my mid-teens, I think about 15, 16 years old. So let's go over there first, and then we're gonna take a look at the contest, okay? So this was called Galaxy Rangers. Um, I have the audio on too, so we can actually listen because the music was awesome. <laughs> so this show came out, like I said, mid eighties, I think 86 or so. Um, 3D was really new at this time. As you can see, they put it in, in there. And, oh, that's interesting. The old group, they're, they're only playing the song here, not the tech, but I mean, the, the language. It's basically that aliens brought technology to earth and by doing so, it allowed us to create these things called hyperdrives, which allow us to fly around the galaxy. And because of that, that led to this idea of creating rangers or like a police force that works across the entire galaxy, right? And each one of these characters has like a unique power um, when they touch their badge, right? So you have the leader who has this charged up arm. You have this woman here who's got like telekinetic brain powers. This guy is like the scientist of the group. And this guy is basically Clint Eastwood, but he can also work, right? So you can see they've got the costuming, but they also have, um, you know, I'm gonna lower the audio. They have the costuming, but there's a, a good sense of science fiction, obviously mixed in with this. So we've got the, uh, we've got the sci-fi piece as well, right? So that's one of the things we're gonna be judging uh, today, the to work with is what is that balance? You know, what's the balance between uh, those two items. I love the robot horses. Some of you actually came in with stuff like that. So really cool. Robot horses are always a huge plus. Really awesome. Uh, and so that's pretty much it. Like I said, this is when I think Space Cowboy, I think this, or as you can see behind me, of course, the ultimate Space Cowboy, I would say is Han Solo, right? Um, uh, and it's funny, I wasn't even thinking of Han Solo until I started putting this together. I started thinking about the thumbnail and the, th the thumbnail led me to... Um, to Clint Eastwood first. And I was like, oh my God, Han Solo, of course, he's Clint Eastwood in outer space, right? For whatever reason, I've never thought of that. And, I'm, and I'm a huge Star Wars fan. So uh, so it was kind of fun to have that, um, that epiphany, you know? All right, so enough Galaxy Rangers. Um, let's talk to you about today's contest a little bit more and start taking a look at artwork. We have a lot of stuff to, uh, to go over. Is that anime said redacted? No, I wouldn't say it was anime. You could see the faces and all or not, it's it's funny, it's kind of what, I'm, it, it feels like it in its coloring and a little bit of the styling, but I wouldn't say it was anime, you know? It's a kind of weird amalgamation, I think, between American and maybe a little touch of anime in there, but definitely not pure anime. Um, okay, so Space Cowboy, right? Let's get to it. Um, 
So here's some of the things that we really wanted to see out of this um, assignment, right? First of all, it's fulfilling the assignment. If we can't see that it's sci-fi space or it's not enough cowboy, no good, right? The assignment, if this was a job, is that you're trying to show us that we've got science fiction and outer space somehow tied in here uh, and that it shows cowboy, right? So right underneath that, so that's the assignment. I would say it's like number one. Number two is clarity. Clarity kind of goes across all of these things. It's like, is the assignment clear? Did you really show space? Did you show cowboy? Um, the creativity. Some of you had some really, really interesting ideas. Did you clearly represent those ideas? Do we get it, right? Do we get what you're actually trying to represent? There should be no confusion, basically, right? There's also skill, you know, like what's your skill level in this? So some of you came in with great ideas. You just need a little bit more work on your skills so you can better represent your ideas, right? Some of you are really clever. I have to say there was some really fun stuff that came in. You just need more skill to show it off in a, in a better light, right? So there's more clarity around what's happening, right? Uh, and last but not least is function. Uh, well, actually, I'm going to add one other thing to here that's not in here, just to state the obvious, um, is it should be forceful, right? This is force that we're looking at, right? So let's get back to function. We want to see um, how things work. If you got stuff in there that's techy, then it should look like it works. Um, so if it doesn't, it's like, okay, I'm taken out of, you know, I have, I'm disbelieving, right? As soon as I'm in the disbelief mode, then that's over as well, right? I want to understand how things operate. And we are here at obviously um, the Force YouTube channel. So we would like some drama, some drama in the poses, good shape design, right? Good force shape design, at least in the figures or in the things that you're drawing. The objects may not be very forceful, right? They could be more mechanical and such but they should be functional. If you want to bring force over to function in that way, they should be functional and forceful, right? But not necessarily appealing forceful shape, okay? All right, did I forget anything, guys? Does that sound good? Yeah, to say hello. Okay. <laughs> okay, so um, to help you all out, uh, Swanley and Mertunje, I mean, and Swanley and I brought in some of our uh, character design work. So it's something we've both done in the past. Um, you may have seen some of this stuff before, and I can't remember if I've shown it in prior videos or not, but I did a lot of character design work um, years ago for huge MMOs, like hundreds and hundreds, no joke, hundreds of character designs, okay? Because MMOs, as you know, um, man, they're, it's world building, right? It's like you're having to create these huge spaces. So uh, a couple of things to recognize is like the clarity of the shapes, even like texture, I painted this with watercolor. I wasn't as good then at like, let's say Photoshop is now. So I did this watercolor because I wanted to get a sense of the texture of the materials as well. Like you'll notice the sheen on the metal plate compared to the, the rivets in the plate versus uh, the chain mail, right? Like giving a sense of different, it's, it's like costume design, right? So getting some texture in there, um, personality, Right. So this one, he's really more stoic here. He's kind of tough with it and brooding with his head down. But clarity, right? Clarity of how things work, what they are, what kind of character is this person, right? He's not like up in the air skipping, <laughs> right? Very different. Um, years ago, I did actually work on Bioshock at its very early stages. So this is for Irrational Games. So this is for Bioshock. We were working on how humans were being manipulated in the, in the game. Um, so you can see that front hand claw is gonna obviously be huge and heavy. If I were to redo this now, I would probably say, how is he carrying that giant heavy hand? Like the pose of the body should probably do a better job of showing the weight of that than how I drew it here. Um, you can see the exposed brain and it's supposed to be morphed humans, right? So it's got humanoidish face, right? With a lot of almost like teeth, you're drawing uh, you know, bones that are sticking out through the skin, right? Uh, last but not least, um, from my end, uh, this was for a game called Mythica that later Microsoft unfortunately canceled, but we were drawing berserkers and Vikings. Uh, so I think this guy probably was the best one with the berserker idea. Uh, I look at this now and I think, ah, I got kind of a tangent that started happening there with that blade, I would say in the back, like that's a little confusing to me uh, with the helmet. Uh, but I like the pose. I like the pose a lot. You know, it feels crazed to me. Um, I like the cockiness and the brooding again of this guy. I was 
making these massive shields. By the way, I really wanted to get all this like Norse pattern. And I was like, how am I going to do this? There's no way I'm drawing that, <laughs> you know, I'm trying to get that accurate. So I went out, you know, online and I started searching um, for shapes that would fit the axe that were Norse and I manipulated them. And I just literally brought this in here, transformed it, skewed it to the perspective correctly. So it looked like I drew it in there, but it's knowing perspective, right? That allowed that to get in there in the first place, right? I was also very inspired by Walt Simonson, one of my favorite comic book artists. So a lot of the styling in here, I was grabbing from him with me drawing, manipulating that styling, um, and then pushing towards more of a Viking berserker um, aesthetic, right? So I was, I was juggling three or four balls in the air the whole time to try and get to this place, okay? So yeah, I loved this project, really fun, fun project. Again, we did tons of character designs for this. I think Microsoft had already put about 10 to 12 million dollars, which was more money, obviously, back then. And then they canceled it. I think it was because of legal reasons, actually. From I think another company owned the word Mythica, and there was a lot of stuff going on there. I don't really know in the end why they canceled, but um, I even flew to Microsoft. I was in New Jersey working on this stuff. I flew out to Microsoft, met with the team, saw the game. It was all awesome. I was I was quite shocked, I have to say, when they 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 shut it down. Um, so that's it, right? So we have some of Swenley's. I brought two of Swenley's pieces in here. I'm glad that I asked him to bring this in because it feels like a more modern version of what's out there. It might feel a little more old school. They're not drawn digitally. A lot of stuff was hand also as well. Um, again, clarity, clarity in the pose, clarity in the silhouette, clarity of the character, clarity in the costuming and all. Um, so, you know, you want force, you want good shape, you want good form. Uh, good silhouette, and then you have the, the 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 icing on the cake, which is the costuming of the character. Um, there's texture, right? So I put a lot of texture in my armored guy. His name was Hank. Um, here you can see in Janos uh, here or Janos um, that Swanley put in these um, uh, what would you call these? These like hieroglyphs in a sense, right? That are going along the edge of the costuming. Really adds, right? Really adds to the the information feels mystical or cultural in some sense, right? Um, yeah, it's a really beautiful design. Uh, notice also, by the way, the angles that we drew our characters from, right? There's typically like a three quarter shot, right? So you're getting side view and front view, which is probably the best angle to draw a character from. Not flat, straight on, not back, not three quarter back, but three quarter front, because that's where most of the information should be, right? Uh, so you can see Swenley did that here, and he did it here, right, in this Rin concept illustration. Again, three-quarter front, very similar to the character, the Hank drawing, right? But different personality, a little more cocky and upfront than I did with my guy. Um, interesting here that, like, this armor is kind of floating around the arm. You can see the edges of the armor are actually not there. This tattoo kind of intrigues me because it's glowing. It's like, well, what's going on there? What is What kind of power does she have, right? So anyway, this is, like I said, this is what we're looking for, right? So let's get to it, right? Just as a reminder, again, we're looking, you've got to fulfill the assignment. We're looking for clarity, creativity, skill, function, and force, of course. Um, we'll go slowly through these. I thought the most meaningful way for us to go over this is to try to make this a learning experience, of course, instead of like, no, 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 yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Here's our winner and we're done, right? We're gonna to try to obviously turn this into a, like in a sense, a, uh, a class for you guys, right? So let's see, let's go here. I wanna grab down here. Here we go. Okay, I'm gonna to go to the bottom here. So here's our first one. Um, I had names. I made sure I typed in the names here. So it was Bawerky, right? Bawerky Art. Um, what I like about this one a lot is the idea of using reference, right? Because we've talked about that, I think just last week, if I'm not mistaken, last week, no, last week or the week before. Like it's okay to use reference, um, but I would prefer that you played with it, not only by costuming it, but by pushing the pose or changing the camera angle so it's not such a direct lift. 
It could be, but I think you could have, you might've gotten more out of this. The silhouette isn't the best because tangenting on the foot in a sense, um, the hands position over here in the face is very tight in this little space between the head and the face. Um, personally, I would have loved more information here as well, right? Like I got cowboy cause there's a hat and it's on like a astronaut helmet and we have a weapon. Uh, I think it needs clarity, right? So clarity, maybe clear silhouette, right? Uh, anything you guys want to add? Yeah, yeah. I would say the thing that would really improve this, even as simple as it is, is a face. You know, like this right here is is so black, and actually it has a lot of contrast, but then there isn't anything really happening. Mm -hmm. You know, so like moving the hair again, using references, inspiration. So even if you want it flowing, it could be something like this. You know, and then you have the, the, at least the character's face in you. So you can see some type of personality and character. Yeah, you know? that's a good point. I think, you know, keep in mind that we're talking about character design. So I've taught character design classes in the past. Um, and, you know, it's character and it's design. What does that mean? I, I always had this conversation. Why is it called character drawing, right? Design to me means you're now making conscious decisions towards an end goal, right? Drawing leads into studying and understanding and learning. But with design, you're, you've got a job basically in mind and you're taking all the tools of art to like complete or fulfill that job as best as possible, right? I think Swanley makes a great point here and huge part of character is somebody's face. So I think hiding the face is a mistake. I would say, don't hide the face. For those of you that did, I think you gotta show the face, right? Like. Unless you had like numerous images, you know, where we're going to see the face in another shot or something. Sure. But if you're sending in one like this, we've got to see the face of the character. Super important. So keep that in mind, you know, for next uh, for next week. Right. That we want to see the face of the character. And like I said before, I would just like to see a little more information. It's a little simple. Uh, it's like I don't really know what the costuming is on the legs or how those pieces work. Even if it was for like TV animation, I'd probably want a little bit more. The gun could be more clarified. So th there's a level of finish that has to happen here. It doesn't mean that your drawing can't be rough. Remember there's this idea of um, clear, not clean, right? It doesn't have to be super, super clean, but clear enough for us to understand every component. It comes back to that clarity concept again, right? Okay, any other thoughts from you guys before we move on? Uh, no, I think that's it. Okay. So here's our next one. Uh, so pretty good, you know, talking about skill, I would say pretty good skill. Um, you know, we have a lot of space, it's foreshortening. Um, why don't you guys start this one instead of me taking over the whole thing? Swanley, you want to take a, take a walk through this? Yeah, sure. So skill-wise, you need this. Uh, it's pretty good, like nice for perspective you know even how the character is like sitting uh i would say the main thing is clarity you know again if the briefing is space cowboy like that's the first thing that you want to read you know i have to look at this character and, and see without any description without, I, without anyone telling me see that hey this is space cowboy and that's i would say the thing that could use more clarity in this one you know, and also like here, like what exactly is happening? It looks cool drawing wise, but what's happening there? You know, we need a bit more like clarity. And even if you have to like do a drawing on the side, to, like show how certain things work, totally fine. Again, clarify your ideas so that when, a, when an art director or a client sees this, it's immediately clear what it is that they are looking at. Yeah, I'd agree. Um... I exactly agree. I'm not sure what this is. I don't know if it's attached to the character's breast. I don't know if they're missing an arm or not. Therefore, a little hard to tell back here. I don't know if this is a gun or a knife or some kind of other weapon. This is intriguing. And you're onto something here. I think if you're going to paint, again, more clarity in the tonal um, contrast of seeing knobs and buttons or whatever, you know, that's here. I like that you threw the boots on there. Maybe if these looked more Western, you're almost there. Maybe they had stirrups or some kind of science fiction version of the stirrup, right? To make it look more like a cowboy boot. 
I think the bullets help, so that starts to imply gun, but I wish I could just see more of this. I think the gun is a big deal, right? Like seeing the weapon, uh, and if it's cowboy, usually it means gunslinger, right? There's, you know, there's like the cowboy hat, right? It's like certain things that are staples, right? This is a good thing to talk about, right? It's cowboy hat, there's the lasso, and there's the gun, right? And then you got cowboy boots and stirrups, you know, the belts, uh, some of the clothing, there's like, uh, uh, like ponchos, um, the shirt and the jeans, right? The pants, uh, there's just certain things you got to hit to make it work, right? Yeah, that's a cool idea, right? So maybe putting the gun in that hand would have been cool. Who drew that? I did. <laughs> yeah. So that brings the gun out, right, into the open. And it happens to be framed by the box. So it's really clear. The knee and the leg are kind of pointing up to it, right? Yeah, it's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so technically, maybe this leg, you know, again, for contrast sake, this could be here, and this would be like outside, inside, outside, you know, maybe it's mm -hmm. going out of the frame, you know, mm -hmm. that leads us better into the image, and then you have enough space to show the gun here, you know, and then again, the face, we don't see what's, what's the character, I don't get an impression of what kind of character we're dealing with, you know, is he wacky, is he, is he like, calm and, and focused, you know, so you need to, even if the hair is covering the face, you need to at least show a little bit of expression here, you know, so we know what kind of character is it. We need an eyeball. Yeah, <laughs> at least one eye. <laughs> yeah, at least one eye. One thing, yeah. one thing to add here is like, I really wish, you know, would it, you would have more focused on the drawing aspects of it rather than uh, the rendering part of it, because if you would just uh, spend like more time exploring the views of it, let's say if you want to show that face, but if you have done a close up of it, like on a side or something, and you say, oh, this is how this is happening, you know, that will be much more greater than like spending time on, you know, like rendering, you know, and painting and on those stuff, because you don't want to uh, rely on to rendering to be clear about your character. You know? It should all just like come into drawing. That's what the thing is. Yeah, when you that's add, very true. Yeah. yeah, when you add like rendering on top of it, it should be like a cherry on top of the cake, you know? <laughs> yeah, no, that's true. Yeah, I think Mertenje is 100% right there. Like all of the solutions and the clarity should be defined already in the design level of drawing, right? So it's the line art end of the design. And then the color should just help support that, right? Just keep adding as icing on the cake to make it better. So. Yeah, like I, I still, I keep coming back to this. I keep looking at this, but I'm like, I'm not really sure how it works. It's like, is this person feeding off of their own breast milk? Like, I don't, I don't know. I'd love to know. I think it's, it's kind of cool, but I don't really know what's happening there. And I wish that I did, you know? So clarity, a little bit more cowboy, you know, space cowboy, I think in here, focus more, make sure the drawing's working for you and the design before you paint. It's cool that you did paint, but push more on that end and iterate more on the clarity within the posing before you get to the painting. Because the painting guys, remember painting is where you're going to eat up all your time, right? So you want to make sure that the drawing is really, really good, right? All right, let's keep going here. So this was Chowing uh, tu Tumpale, Chowing uh, Tumpale, right? Um, skill, skill is pretty damn high, right? It's a good drawing. It's a good cleaning up line. Um, I think all that's good. I think where this falls short for me is um, it's a solid front view of a horse and the rider. And as you saw in the character designs that Swanley and I had done, man, three quarter is a much better way to go. Uh, and so because of that, we miss a lot of information, right? And, the, and, and I would recommend um, if you did do this, everything's on one angle, I probably would have had a little more movement in the horse and maybe had the rider more dramatic and bending over like this and then shooting the weapon, right? So they're trying to compensate for the horse on this like crazy, crazy tilt that it's on, right? While it's, uh, while it's running. And you know what? I, I was just thinking, I'm like, wait a minute, would this happen this way? Because this horse feels like it's falling. It's a functional thing. And I'm like, why does it feel like it's falling? If a horse was tilted this way, then it would, um, it would be turning this way. 
So the horse's head and all even would be like looking this way. And that would have been cool, right? Really, really cool because the horse, you know, just like you're tilting on a motorcycle, right? The horse is pushing against gravity this way. So all this dirt would be spilling out this way. The horse would be looking this way, like where it's going to run to. And then you would have had the rider on the top, right? Like this, like shooting in the opposite direction. That's pretty damn awesome. I have to say, then you've got this like counterbalance going on between horse and rider and that the horse has got its own agenda in a sense, like it's trying to do its job while the cowboy is doing his job, right? So I think there's a little bit of a function thing going on here, even though the drawing skill level is good. And I have to say the clarity in the drawing is good, but not so much the clarity of the posing. And I feel like the horse's head is blocking the character a lot. I really wanna see more of, the, more of the character, you know? What about you guys? Uh yeah, this uh, this uh, pose has a lot of potential in it because you know, this is like a very energetic uh, situation, you know, where it's like running on the horse and like shooting across. So you could like do uh, use all these sorts of like flying, you know, an escape and everything because looking at his costume, it feels like mm -hmm. it's like very loose, you know. So you could, in, uh, you could put like a lot of uh, motion into this, you know. Right now, it just feels more like, you know, he's being tilted, you know, for some reason. And uh, yeah, but uh, you, it has a lot of potential, you know, so you can uh, have like so many situations within it and it would look very awesome, you know, once you have like all these things like flying around <laughs> and everything. Yeah, I think, you know, I was gonna say, I mean, you draw well. Um, so drawing is not the thing here. And, and the space cowboy thing kind of works here too. I like the face mask, I like the weapon. It feels cowboy, you got the hat. I love the edge of the pants. You got a lot of stuff going. This was this would be a close contender in a sense. It needs more drama in the physics and that it functions. Um, and keep in mind silhouette. The silhouette's what's I think hurting this more than anything, right? When I come back to what I was saying before, like if I do an outline around this, um, you know, it's this, right? So the horse and the rider become like one kind of big straight on shape like this, you see? And I fill that in. I'm like, I don't know where they begin and end, right? If we'd gone with, uh, you know, what I was talking about before, you know, we could get the horse's head out of the body of the rider as well and got the rider going another direction, right? So, yeah, man, it's it's frustrating almost because you're you're really good. Uh, and I hope for that you, you know, I hope you submit for the upcoming contests and learn from each one of these phases because I think you have the potential to churn out some really awesome character design work but my, my simple note to you would be, be aware of silhouette, like be really clear, think about the function of the forces, you know, and the drama that you can get out of the poses because you got a lot of other great stuff going on, you know? Anything you want to close with, Swenley? Uh, no, I think you guys were pretty on point. So yeah, okay. it's all good. Okay. All right, thank you for submitting your work. Let's see, we got Donald. So um, I put this in because I have to say, Don, you know, Donald's a regular here. I would have met, yeah, he's here today. Uh, so Don, it's, first of all, I love that you showed us a little bit of process, right? You started off with the cowboy on an actual, you know, bull, and then kept tweaking this towards science fiction, right? So um, I think creative wise, it's awesome. Like, I love that the cowboy is an alien. I think that's really funny. That would have been something that I don't think anyone else actually did. Now that I think of the other contestants here, at least that we're looking at today, no one else said, you know what? I'm going to make the cowboy an alien, right? Like why not make the actual character an alien with, um, you know, earthly attributes of a cowboy, right? So I love that it's, you know, and it's the typical like gray alien with the big eyes. So we, it reads, it's pretty clear in that way. And I love the robotic bull. I think that's really fun too. Um, it's, a, it's obviously oversimplified, right? But the idea is there. Like I like the jets on it because it makes you think that's how it's going to move around. I even like the tail with the little sort of lightning zigzag antenna kind of thing, you know, it makes you think, oh, this is connected to something else. So it's, it's showing a thought of like simple technology, which I think is cool. You know, you're thinking about how does this thing actually work? I would say the main thing that this needs is um, skill, is to push more of the skill abilities that you have into this. 
you did okay with like the bull and it's got form. I wish maybe the arm that was holding the bull was clearer, that the silhouette was clear. Maybe there's a little more negative in there. I know they trapped their arm down, but I'd say for the sake of the design. Uh, and I can't see how the hand, the hand looks like it's backwards holding onto the, the strap for the bull. Um, yeah, anything else you guys want to add? Yeah, I would say talk about function. Like mm -hmm. when I look at uh, what, like what he's sitting on here and all these, like, uh, how do you call these uh, again? These little jets, I guess, right? Yeah, these little jets at the sides. Uh, my question is how does it work? You know, like, because the jets are like propelling in all directions at the same time. You know, so if he's going to move forward, it would make sense for, let's say, the chat to be maybe here, you know. So, and again, functionally, you would want it to like curve here. So, you know, that it can provide enough thrust and power for it to move forward. And maybe there are two here that acts as, uh, like stabilizers, you know, and maybe even here to like keep him afloat. But this one at the front, I mean, this one is like, counteracting what's happening back here. So, you know, again, functionality, very important to keep in mind. Maybe you know? these uh, jets could have been more like ball and socket jointed, right? So it could have been a sphere stuck in the hole and then the jet is here, right? Shooting out because then we would know, oh, these are omnidirectional, right? And they, they mm -hmm. play with one another based on what direction the bull is moving. Right now they're all straight and sticking out. And they'd have to shut on and off and on and off to kind of do their job, but there's probably not enough for them to realistically do it. So, you know, this is a functional piece again to, to piggyback Swenley's commentary. I would have probably went with a ball, ball and socket and had it come out of there and then have them turn and twist, right? And that would solve the, solve the issue, you know? So maybe a little more in function, a little more in like better drawing skill, better presentation, but I would say awesome idea. Right, creativity done is really fun. I think it was one of the more uh, creative submissions. Just a lot of great, you know, it's just such a great concept, right? With the spacey mechanical bull. You had the idea of it being an alien. I think those are really fun, fresh concepts, you know? Yeah, and just, was, uh, just a minor thing that Mike always brings up. Like, notice the character's head is here, but yet the head is here, you know? So you want to make sure that... <laughs> yeah, good point. Actually, it yeah. actually sits on the character's head, you know, like this uh, has to uh, connect. Yeah, it's such an easy thing to overlook, right? But get the hats, especially the cowboy, right? You want to get that hat on the head, right? So here's uh, Gilles is, right? Um, skill, awesome, right? I'd say one of the more skilled um, contestants, right? Skilled pieces that we received. It's pretty damn good. It's it's almost like the Galaxy Rangers thing I was talking about. I love this like kind of robotic, cyborgy um, force. Um, I like the uh, the the um, the cowboy, right? Um, I love that you silhouetted the um, the gun here in this big space. I think that's really good. This isn't a bad thing, but I want all you to be aware of just. You didn't have to draw a horse. The horse makes things way more difficult. We're fine with future submissions that you'd stick with the character itself. I think the horse was an amazing piece. What throws the horse is it, by you bringing in the horse, it gives me an opportunity to judge the horse. I'm like, okay, maybe we should have seen more of the other legs. I feel like I'm only seeing a cut of half the horse, right? You miss by having the horse, you miss the opportunity of telling us maybe there's something on the other leg, right? Pretty good silhouette, but no matter what, on the horse, you're gonna block, right? You're gonna block something. You did a good job of what I was saying earlier, of sort of counterbalancing the horse to the rider. I like that the rider feels like he's going one way, but still looking with the horse in the direction it's running. It's an excellent like dynamic pose. I wish there was more of, more of the horse. Maybe there could have been a little more tech in the guy, technology, but I like the armoring and stuff. I like the breathing piece in the face. Um, it's pretty damn good. You know, and I like the, the joint for the leg, right? So there's a, a thought of function in here, maybe a little bit more of those in the other parts. Like, how do they work? It looks like you're starting to do something there, you know? And it's cool, though. I have to say, it's a pretty darn good illustration, you know? You guys want to add anything?
No, crickets. <laughs> oh, I thought Mitrunja was going to speak. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, I agree with you to say, Mike. It's, uh, it's a pretty good piece. You know, maybe just some refinements here and there. But uh, yeah, at first glance, uh, maybe a little thing to add is like maybe a shadow underneath the, the character. Because mm, now I'm wondering, mm-hmm. yeah, I, now I'm wondering, is the horse on the ground or it's supposed to be like a flying horse? Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. just a little bit there to clarify it even further. Yeah, yeah, it's a good point. It's very good. I mean, the skill really helps represent the clarity of the idea. I yeah. wish if it was me and it was if I were being really picky, I wish it felt a little more techy. I wish there was a little more tech in here. It's kind of a simplified version of technology. I don't know. I'd like maybe to see some reveals in the armor of like how this guy works. Like just having the tube there helps a lot. A little bit of congestion in the silhouette here, a little bit of congestion with the foot and the leg, you know, tangenting and stuff, but it's it's very good. You know, it's it's really well done, you know. All right. Yeah, you're welcome, Don, by the way. Um, okay, so this is Alan's. Um, I would say not forceful enough is the main thing. I get space, you know, in the background, of course, helps there, but you got the breathing mask. I don't know if the breathing breathing mask is enough, all right? The sp- you know, putting Saturn back there helps a lot. Um, so if I just had the character without the background, I might think it's you know, a regular cowboy on earth that's dealing with a lot of sand, <laughs> right? And they're like really picky about being able to breathe in a sandstorm, right? So I don't know if it's enough tech for me. I'd say watch proportion. Uh, if it's if it's human, the hand's a little small compared to the head. Uh, you've got all the attributes, you know, it's like you got the weapon, you got the hat, you got the boots. I wish the drawing was more forceful. You know, it feels more like a, uh, like a test of, drawing wrinkled clothes, you know, like trying to get all those wrinkles in there and trying to make them work like it's clothing exercise, you know? It almost reminded me of Jeff Darrow. I don't know if any of you know who Jeff Darrow is, but it feels Jeff Darrow-ish to me. So if you don't know who that is, you may want to check him out, you know? Uh, So yeah, I'd say my main note is force, you know? I'd like to see more force. And for the assignment, I wish it was more techy. I think there's a lack of balance or at least a closer balance to space and cowboy, you know? If I might add something about function and yeah, like function means like thinking very practically, you know, like this tube here feels very tight. So I imagine if the character were to look that way, this is going to snap and he's going to die. <laughs> That's not true. Being able to breathe, you know, so this would have to be, if you want to keep that, you know, I would say maybe do something like this perhaps, you know, and it could be even here, but this would have to be like, much longer in order for it to be practical. Mm -hmm. Yeah, longer. It might not even need a tube, right? You can, you know, Mm -hmm. I don't know if any of you have seen Loki, right? The TV show on Disney Plus, but it's futuristic technology, but yet visually it looks like the 60s, right? Like the aesthetic looks like 60s. They have 60s shaped television, but you buy into the tech of what shows up on the screens so it feels like modern technology mixed with a certain period of production design, right? So my point is, you may not even need the tube. You can still make a mask that feels more techy. Uh, we had one of the artists earlier did that, that had a mask, you know, and almost like a COVID mask, right? But more technological kind of shape to it, right? <laughs> so, yeah, and even the gun, the gun is very symmetrical. Um, so I'm not sure about the V-shaped pinch of it. It doesn't feel like I'd really get down to the barrel talking to Swanley's point about function. I don't know if I believe that there's a, a gun in there, you know, All right? So again, submit next time, please. You know, I'd love to see what you do with the uh, the next assignment. This is, is, is artist, uh, Sorry, Mike, that artist could use a lot of under construction a little bit, you know, because I don't know if this is like a cleanup version or if you have done like a uh, the construction, like the underdrawing of it, but you can just use a lot of construction you know, underneath. And yeah, uh, more work underneath, yeah, good point. Yeah, and just uh, you can push more angles, you know, even so if the character is just like walking, let's say on uh, someone's on Saturn moon or something and dealing with space. So you can just like push a little bit more angles and he's like uh, maybe like a face in here and then he's like a little bit bendy and then he's like putting his arm like this. So he's like, oh my God, there's so much of like sand, you know, like 
pushing him back and there's like he's trying to like fight off the uh the sand you know the sandstorm like that's coming so yeah, we're acting right yeah just like show more like what he's doing there even if he's not fighting with an alien or you know mm -hmm. something like that i mean the subtlety yeah. could also bring in a lot of force you don't have to always be in that action you know kind of situation to show the good drawing yeah, yeah. no good points all right, let's see how we're doing here. We're going to start picking up the pace a little bit because we're running out of time. Um, let's see, this is Annalise's. Um, a lot of cool stuff going on here. I'd say I love the creativity. I think my main issue with this was um, function. Like, does this character always fly around because they don't have feet? Or is there some kind of like transformer like mechanism that goes from foot to, you know, to jets? Uh, I don't know how this gun is sitting in her back, right? It looks like it's stuck in her back versus being strapped to it. And I can't tell if that weapon is part of this weapon because there's two different things going on with like a 90 degree angle in them. I'd like to see this leg piece attached more to the leg itself, right? Like it's hard to tell how it's just sitting there, right? And what is that thing on it? So it's, you have no shortage of creativity. For all of you, my suggestion is imagine this is real, right? Like we're all working on a movie, right? With a real actor or a person. They can be in a costume or whatever, but the stuff that you give them to wear has to work, right? It has to sit on their body. It has to work. It has to make sense, right? So you can't just like throw stuff in there, right? And that, that's challenging. You know, it's hard to do that. So, you know, we want you to keep that in mind, okay? Uh, this is Jay-Z's. Um, I love the shape design of this. I like the pose. The pose itself is very Western, right? Very cowboy. It's skill wise, skills really high, right? Excellent drawing skill, excellent shapes. Um, my main note on this one would be, I don't know between cowboy and Western, I mean, cowboy and sci-fi, if we're getting enough sci-fi. I like this little thing that's floating around. It feels like there's a lot of opportunities here to have pushed, um, you know, either the monocle is like really more technological looking. How is it attached to his face or his head? Um, the tech that would be in the front of the glass itself. I love the little planetary badge. I think that's really fun. And in the, uh, the buckle. Um, maybe there would have been some kind of tech or something subtle in the pommel of the, um, of the gun, right? That would have been really cool too. You guys have anything to add before we move on? Yeah, I think this one is very cool. Very cool proportions and playing with shapes. That's a very unique and recognizable silhouette as a character, you know. So I would say the the silhouettes and even the the character itself works. It just needs a bit more work on the costuming, and then it will fill the brief. Yeah, yeah, I agree. It's got a lot of good stuff going for it. I love that you got the spurs in there. That's really cool, and the the boots feel more futuristic. That's kind of cool, you know. Man, I think if it was just me, I'd want just more tech. Like, man, you got that glove on there. I'd love to have seen that do something. I don't know if any of you have seen Cowboys versus Aliens. Uh, Daniel Craig, who plays James Bond, is like the lead character in that. And he's got this bracelet that does all kinds of crazy stuff, right? Uh, that's like alien tech. I think just maybe a little bit more of that because everything else is going is really good. Real, and I love that you you did one thing I think nobody else did, which is you hit the classic silhouette, right? He's about to, he's on, he's in a standoff, right? He's about to shoot his weapon. Awesome, right? So smart, such a smart idea. Okay, this is um, Axe Dandy. Um, pretty cool. I love this. This feels like those toy horses that you get as a kid that are like a bouncy horse, basically, or shaped like that. So we've got that. We've got some jets. So it shows that it floats. Um, this is like an astronaut with, a cowboy hat. So it's like, it kind of fits the brief, but I wish there was more creativity put into the astronaut part. The horse is, I would say in some ways more creative than the astronaut is. And one of the comments we've made a few times today is it'd be great to see some kind of face. I don't know if there's an alien in there or human in there, even just some insinuation of like the profile of their face in there with a little bit of the eye, right? We're talking about at least one of the eyes. So we have some kind of expression and personality in there. It's just a little simple on the astronaut side, especially with the creativity. Um, maybe a little bit more force in the pose. It's a little, a little casual, maybe a little bit more there. Um, 
but I love the horse. I love that you put the horse in there and he's got the straps around it. It's almost like a motorcycle bouncy thing. You know, that's kind of cool. Very simple shape, you know? Yeah. Anything guys, before we move on? Yeah, I would say the main thing, uh, especially if you're going this simple is contrast, you know, like mm -hmm. you want the contrast, the, the character with, uh, with its right. You know, so the character could be, maybe could be maybe something more long what uh what james had so maybe longer and thinner you know to contrast maybe has longer arms mm -hmm. you know? now it starts remember contrast creates interest so all of a sudden now there's a contrast between the character and it's right you know like now it's almost the same yeah, yeah so i would even say just contrast of pose right meaning the horse is just standing there doing its thing and the guy is just standing there straight. So again, more drama, I think a little bit more diagonals, maybe him interacting in a more of a way than just holding on to the, the harness might've been cool too. There's lots of different ways you could have gone with this, but I think I'd like to see more tech. I would like to see in a little more of the face, a little bit more personality in the pose, a little bit, yeah, a little bit more detail in the technology. It could be drawn simply, but just a little more representation of that, you know? It's in the right direction. I just, and I wish the cowboy had more. A hat to me is not enough, you know? Like, I know you got the horse, but the hat's not enough. I think you need the gun at least, right? Some kind of weapon. Okay, B.B. Uh, Ambrose. I love that there's different views going on here, um, that we have a face, right? We see the face, we got face shots, we have an action pose, we got the hero pose. The hero pose is like the main pose. Um, I think it's not techy enough. I think it needs more tech. I'm not sure what she's holding, right? Because this looks like a hybrid between, between a rifle, a fishing pole, and a lasso, right? So I don't know functionally how this, how this works. And this isn't helping me, right? It would have been cool, maybe, right? You could have shown here, like, you know, it looks like she's holding something entirely different, in fact. I'm like, how does this thing actually work? So I think it needs a little bit more clarity of function and information for us to really get it. A little more cowboy, I think, you know, a little more cowboy. I don't know if the, the lasso is enough, and I can't tell if this is a rifle or not, you know? Any thoughts? Just uh, miss that uh, cowboy, you know, theme a little bit. So as we were told, like talking before, it's like the space and the cowboy. Uh, so she has that tech side a little bit. I mean, she requires the tech side also, but also the cowboy part of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, again, it's just uh, that thing, you know, that she's holding. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's it. Anything, Swanley? Uh, no, I agree with you guys. I think like the like the I like the style. Like the style, I think is very like unique. You know, good shapes. It just needs to uh, again the character silhouette works. It just needs to like give the character a different costume to make it fit more into the theme. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I would say this one, you know high skill, right? This is um, J.W. Williams, right? So super high skill, um, probably the best painted one I would say we received out of the submissions. Um, I love the color scheme. I love the monochromatic like feel of all of this. Um, face, right? We have the edge, but man, I wish I could see her face. Like, why do I want to look at the back of her helmet? It's such a, this, this would have gone up like 10 points just by turning her head around, right? Versus her back. And we normally want to, especially in a hero pose of a character, usually want to see, again, that front three-quarter view, right? Or something closer to that. Um, cowboy, so you hit two of the three, right? So no hat, because she's wearing the helmet, but you got the lasso, you got the guns. I'd like to know where the guns go, right? I don't see any holsters for the weapon, so there's a little bit of a functional thing going on there. Um, silhouette's okay. It's clear. Uh, what else? Clarity, function, force is good. I love the way she's standing. A lot of fluidity going on. I would say it comes down to the assignment. Um, like, is it enough? I don't know if it's enough cowboy or not. I wish I knew what this thing was a little better. It looks like she's getting a reading from this. Like, what is it reading? You know, how does this thing work? It's interesting when you come up with your own like tech, right? Because 
the secret to coming up with new tech is it has to work like stuff we already know. Otherwise we're like, what is that thing? I have no idea what it's doing, right? So it's gotta, you gotta be clever about leaning on something that you already recognize, right? And how that thing actually operates. It's gotta be some connectivity to the known, right? To get there. But damn, is it drawn well and it's painted well, you know? And it's got some good ideas, you know, and it's leaning. I think it needs a little bit more cowboy. I would love to have seen the face more of a three quarter front than a back. There's no reason for the back. If, if the back was like super important, I'd say, okay, I get it. But there's just this box on her back, right? So it's not like it's a very special, unique thing that we really need to see, you know? Any thoughts? Yeah, I think to your point, association is an important element when you want to tell a story, you know, because yeah. association creates meaning and meaning evokes an emotion. So even something as simple as, let's say her gun is like a, a sci-fi version of like a like a more Western gun, for example. And she could have, uh, what are these little things called again? At the back of the cowboy. Uh, uh, spurs. Uh, yeah, the spurs, you know. Someone would look at those and associate it with cowboy or or Western and say, hey, this is uh, probably a space cowboy of some sort. And that's what you want. You want that association that makes someone uh, uh, instantly read what the character is. You know, and could be little details, you know, so you have to be creative with that. Yeah, exactly. Okay, this is um, Michael's, just Michael AJ. Um, just because I know who this is, I know some of these other people as well, but I know this, I would say, man, way more drama, right? Just knowing how you normally draw, way more drama in this one versus the stance. Um, I like that there's some tech going on. I think it needs more clarity in how all that stuff works. Uh, I like this piece with the face and the hat merge. That's kind of clever. That's like a new thing going on. If it's like sand people meets cowboy, you know, like there's an interesting thing. And I like this around the neck. That's very cowboy as well. Um, the gun's somewhat clear, but look, see like there's no trigger. That's a functional piece, right? Like how does this thing work? You just squeeze the handle somehow. Um, where does this thing get put away? Is that the holster? Because if it is, how would that hold this giant, very round weapon? This gun looks more like the shape that would fit in that holster. Um, but man, I would love to have seen more drama out of this, uh, especially knowing how dramatic you can draw. Um, silhouette's okay. Outside of, like I said, the drama piece, you got space, you got cowboy. I do like the monochromatic feel of this. Um, yeah, the feet are a little funny, like just getting him standing on the ground, right? See the leg looks like it's coming towards me with the knee, but then the foot is sideways. So that's a skill thing. It's just like watching the perspective piece on it, you know? Uh, anything that you guys want to add before we move on? That's good. Yeah, okay. So this one, this is by um, Kaz Laos Gui. Um, this character named Hayes. What I really loved here, I wanted to share with you was the write-up that this artist put in as well into their text um, for the Instagram post, right? So smoking e-cigarettes, family, cowboy, best of his town, recognized by other, pistol, the hat given by his daughter. I love this. You know, as I have said before, I think writing leads to creativity and I love all of the work that was put in here as a backstory to help illustrate the character. So A plus on doing this work to get to your illustration, right? To try and get here. Uh, when it comes to the character, why don't, why don't you take this one, Swanley? What are your thoughts on this? Yeah, so posing and silhouettes, very good. No, skill-wise as well, like very good shapes. Character feels balanced and like the personality comes across, you know, you have some unique details in, in the face. Uh, the one thing I would say is like the, the uh, cowboy part needs to read more instantly. And it could be something as simple as, you know, maybe placing that hat on, uh, on his head here for this shot. You know, like it reads in a back view, but it's not a primary read. You know, I have to look at the image for a while to notice that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you want the, the, the cowboy team to read at first glance. No, so that's the one thing I think I would add. 
But otherwise, yeah. that silhouette again, right? Like, you know, Jay Z, I think, had one of the strongest silhouettes we looked at today the silhouette mm -hmm. red cowboy. So, everyone keep that in mind when you go on to the next assignment. Like, find a good classic silhouette and then maybe tweak from there. But it should read at that moment in time. And all the information that you put into that silhouette, you know, is your creativity. And you can manipulate the silhouette, but you want to get a sense of the silhouette representing the core idea of this. And the guy with his hands up in the air that Jay Z had, you know, about to grab the gun, like, Man, you can't beat that. That's that's that is such a Western cowboy silhouette. And then you just need to make it more tech, right? Make it more space. And to Swanley's point here, character could have been holding the hat too. You know, could have easily held the hat in one hand and maybe had the gun in the other. I know he's got the vape there too, but um, that was another option. You know, was there anything else you wanted to add, Swanley? I just jumped in on you. Uh, let's see. Well. This is great, you know, writing, explaining your ideas, even clear. So these are definitely good things to add when you're designing a character. This is great. You know, we can see a bit of the, how the, the boot works and what the tech is. So yeah, very well thought out, you know? So yeah, great job on these. Yeah, I like, I think yours in a way is the most professional one in presentation of saying we've got a three quarter front, which is great. And we have a three quarter back, so we get both views. I like the write ups. I like the name in the left corner. It's on a background, so you you know you've brought it up a notch, like to to the presentation for everyone to see what what's good. Um, talking about the tech in the back of the leg, I wish this was more informed. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's hydraulics or if this is like a crunchy tube around like wiring, I'm not sure. I like the idea, I think creatively, it's kind of cool to see the boots like this and it's hiding this gap in the back, right? Um, so it's good, it just needs, there's things that it needs, but it's good, you know, all in all, you're in a pretty good space. All right, we're running out of time. I'm gonna finish up these last ones real quick and then we're gonna announce the winner. Um, this is Lazy, Lazy Goblin, right? So. Creativity, I think it's really fun. Um, you know, we've got this body with these legs with shoes on it. It would have been cool if this might've been horse legs. I kept wondering like, why are these human legs? It would have been awesome if it was horse or maybe robotic horse. To me, this isn't enough sci-fi. And I guess this is my own take on it. It's just more tech in it versus it being creature. Because I don't know if this is cowboy meets fantasy or if it's cowboy meets space, right? And space is science fiction, basically. Uh, so it's like, I'm not sure how to differentiate. Someone can argue that, hey, you know, space doesn't have to be sci-fi, but I, I would say in general, right, there's gonna be some kind of tech within the science fiction of it. So good skill, you know, pretty good silhouette. You got all the major things for the cowboy. I just don't know if we hit the space thing strong enough. This is Robin. Um, pretty good right just to be clear again you don't need the whole scene but man you've got all the tropes right it's like it's cowboy it's wearing armor cool looking weapon i love this gun i love that it's a smoking gun you got the holsters good silhouette i like the costuming i think the costume is really good you can see the hat he's got another gun on his back it reads space you know space cowboy Skills pretty high. I wish this foot wasn't flat side view. Try never to go just totally flat side. I would put this in like more of a three quarter. Yeah, because it it feels like the legs over rotated. It's more of an anatomical thing. I love the glowing eye underneath the shadow of the hat too. I think that's clever. You know, I got to say, I think it's got. Oh, this is a good design. It's got a lot of stuff going for it. You know, it reads old western. I love the holes in there too. So I love the. Yeah, that's cool. I love how it's torn and worn. I like the texture or textile uh, sense of the fabric. It's very good. I love this gun. I got to say the gun's awesome. Kind of reminds me of some of the Halo weapons a little, but it's, it's cool. All right, last but not least, we have Pam. Fun idea, right? Uh, first of all, I like that it's a female, right? Uh, I think that's cool. That would have been totally fine and totally acceptable. Um, Unless, you know, I guess when I said cowboy, I should have said cow person, really, but I, would have, I wouldn't have minded either way. Next week, there is a gender in the name, so be aware of that, okay? Uh, my, only, my main thought here is how is she out there in outer space riding this kind of missile bull pig thing? 
uh, and breathing, right? It's like more of like a motorcycle helmet in outer space. Like it would have been, it just needs more of the space side, more of the functional side, more of the believability of all of that. That's it, you know? Otherwise it's got a lot of fun stuff going in it. It needs more function, more reality, okay? All right, we're out of time. So we're gonna announce the winner, right? Our top contestants were basically this one, Kazlo Gui, right? Good job, uh, Robin, right? And James, all right? And we gave you notes on each one of them on I think the good and the bad. And to make a long story short, drum roll, right? <laughs> Our winner for this week, <laughs> Our winner for this week is Robin, okay? So good job, Robin. Um, Swanley, Matunjay, and I all agree in that you just struck space and cowboy in the right percentaging and gave us a really clear concept of this character. They can use a touch more skill, but it's drawn pretty well. Um, it's not the background I care about or not. I think you've got the outer space thing attached to things that we know that are cowboy and you just got us the right mix. And I think we're all really pleased by that. It's the other two that were the runner ups here in the top three, I think you both did an excellent job. Hopefully you got some notes today that'll help. And I would highly recommend you submit. Uh, the winner of this contest, by the way, has won uh, the Force Basics course. So that means email me, right? I'm Mike at drawingforce.com. Uh, email me and uh, we'll make sure that you set up an account there. And that means you'll always forever, it's a lifetime membership to that course. You have a lifetime access to the Force Basics course on drawingforce.com, okay? So congratulations, Robin. Uh, thank you, Mertunje and Swenly for your, um, your help. Um, I highly recommend you all submit again next week, right? Don't be shy, keep sending stuff in so you learn from week to week to week to week, okay? Um, the, the challenge is gonna get more and more challenging, right? So try to keep up with us. This was the simplest of them. And now you have a better idea of what we're looking for because here we are like talking to you about it. So hopefully, like I said, I, I guarantee the designs are gonna improve more and more from each week. Keep in mind, you know, function, clarity, force, um, the assignment, right? Like what is it we're looking for? Uh, and just make sure we really all get it, okay? All right, guys. Thank you, Swanley and Um, I'll see you guys next week, and we will all see the rest of you next week with your new designs, okay? Look for tomorrow morning's um, Instagram post, okay? Take care. Bye-bye, and thanks again. See you guys. Bye-bye. See ya.